I'm also working in this, of course, there's the terrific breakthroughs of Green and Tao mm -hmm. um, on understanding the distribution of primes and the K term arithmetic progressions of primes that they prove happens infinitely often. Mm -hmm. And I was actually, I mean, I've been there from sort of the start of that because um, when Ben Green was visiting me in Montreal, they actually finished the proof of the theorem. So I was there for that excitement. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they just put the last step in place mm -hmm. while he was visiting me. And um, yeah, so it's just such a revolution in mm -hmm. how we understand primes. My primary interest in mathematics for the last decade has been understanding the distribution of prime numbers. So um, the the ideas of Green and Tau are just are just new. I mean, they're just not the way anybody had been thinking before. Mm -hmm. It's the greatest revolution in the subject in I don't know how long. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm certainly trying to understand a large part of it, but it's hard to keep up with these guys. They produce, you know, three or four 80-page papers a year, <laughs> which are very hard. <laughs> so it's hard to actually be abreast of everything. But um, for me, I've done a lot of learning in the last couple of years to try and participate in this field. I'm just starting to get a couple of ideas that are, are okay <laughs> to uh, participate in <laughs> what they're doing, but. What they will succeed in doing, I'm sure, in the next few years is, is, to, is to answer many, many of the key questions about the distribution of prime numbers. Mm -hmm. they, they have a program, which I'll talk about a little bit in my lecture today. Mm -hmm. They have a program that's just spectacular. Mm -hmm. it's, and the ideas are just nothing like what analytic number theorists have really done before. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is that they're slowly reformulating a lot to look a lot like some of the ideas of Winograd and others. Mm -hmm. um, They've been moving in certain directions, but mm -hmm. fundamentally, they're, they're harmonic analysts, and they're using the reformulating deep deep ideas of Furstenberg and Agotic theory, so that they can they're reworking these and rethinking them so they can use them as harmonic analysts to do mm -hmm. work on prime numbers. It's they don't come from prime number theory school. So, mm -hmm. You know, it's sort of a dream, I guess, in mathematics that people. Um, in one area affect another. There's these links mm -hmm. between different areas, mm -hmm. and yeah, I guess one thing I say in this interview. I mean, one um, growing up as a mathematician, there's been a lot of prejudice in in top level research towards algebraic geometry and algebraic topology mm -hmm. and techniques from those areas. And I think part of it is that that people in those areas have been so excited by the way <coughs> seemingly different areas link together. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, analysis um, and combinatorics have perhaps not got the respect they deserve because, not because the quality of the work was any any less, but because there weren't these magical interactions mm -hmm. between different areas that seemed to be different. And although the people in combinatorics analysis might enjoy what they were doing and think it's good, and the, the, the more algebraically minded will look at it and say, well, what's the point? We don't see the beauty we see in what we're doing. Maybe they were narrow minded, but maybe they were so infected by their own beauty that. Anyway, but that's changed. Mm -hmm. That's changed enormously very recently. So, I mean, really, Gao is inspired, but Terry Tao and Ben Green and Sergei Konyag and others mm -hmm. have been the Agli Vigdis and have been at the forefront of this revolution that we see um, hardcore harmonic analysis, agotic theory, graph theory, computational complexity theory, all asking the same questions in different ways. We're seeing mm -hmm. Ideas in random graph theory, which seem to be so removed from everything else, we're seeing that they are proving things in hard analysis now. Mm -hmm. I mean, funnily enough, the ideas are all based on on Zemmeredi's theorem from 1975, but he was so far ahead of his time, Zemmeredi, and that nobody really saw that that mm -hmm. he was creating something new. And it's been this recent group of people that have really built the connections. And now, like Terry Tower likes to write papers where he shows this set of ideas in analysis and this set of ideas in ergodic theory, they're really the same set of ideas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's not necessarily a, a direct link, but, but the whole way everything's formulated, mm -hmm. the thinking, he, he reworks things so you can see mm -hmm. it very clearly. And it, it's, it's a magical time if you're interested in these areas. So mm -hmm. for me, I've been shifting, I mean, I've been having my fun with Sender Raj and classical analytic number mm -hmm. theory, but I'm really excited about the revolution in random graph theory and analysis mm -hmm. and so forth and, and mm -hmm. want to understand it and be part of it. And, um, but it's hard because 
combinatorics is something I think more than anything else is good for young people. And uh, there's a lot of fantastic young people who are drawn to all the excitement. And uh, mm -hmm. a lot, there's a lot of, a lot of wonderful things happening all the time.